really excited to talk to my next guest here. This might be the first interview he's done, although we did a little cameo on my podcast a few weeks back, but I am joined here today by Shaler Ladd, who's going to be making his amateur debut coming up here against Sean Vedro on March 27th. Shaler, what's up, man? How you doing, buddy? Hi, I'm doing good. I'm just excited to be here. Well, uh, I appreciate you coming on here. If people didn't pick up on the last name, you are the brother of Aspen Lad. What's it like growing up with Aspen, who is, of course, a uh, UFC bantamweight? Honestly, not much different from the average person because we grew up doing it as um, starting. Like I was there when she started at her first place, just a toddler. <laughs> waddling around yeah like martial arts runs in your family right so this was something that you were sort of you know it, it was inevitable that you were going to get into martial arts right yes sir um when i was 10 actually i started in karate and was teaching it by 13 that's cool when did you know you were good at karate well we got into it from our grandpa got started as something to do and get out of the house and we just flew straight into that head over heels and we started competing and doing well. Yeah, and sort of, I'm sure you knew early on, you're like, okay, this is something I got to I gotta get into. Um, there's a, You have a pretty big family. How many siblings are there in, in the Ladd household? Um, there is a total of six kids in the last Ladd wow. household. And one um, kind of like adoptee almost. Okay. Who, so is Aspen the oldest or how, how, does, how does the ranking go in terms of the age? Aspen's oldest, followed by my elder brother Trevor, and then I am third in line. Cool. And yeah. you're a big guy, man. You're how tall are you? How big? You're light heavyweight, right? Yes, sir. I am six three. Depends on if I've had the Cairo six three. Sometimes <laughs> right hand six two. Yeah, they call you your big. Uh, I think they, they. What do they refer to you as? The the big uh, little brother, so to speak. Is that what Aspen calls you? Yeah. Yeah. She- it's, it's been cool. Um. So obviously, you know, I was asked fighters like who some of the influences are. Obviously, Aspen, I'm sure, you know, played a role in that. But when you started watching fighting, like who did you enjoy like watching? Who did you gravitate towards when you were, you know, watching fights on TV? I never really picked up much on actually watching them on TV. Interesting. Like I always preferred being in the gym and doing it. So when I watched it, I mainly watched the big fights that I knew were going to be bangers. Like I watch McGregor or. Um, Lewis, just the um, high pace ones. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. That, that that sounds really cool. And uh, when did you actually make that transition from you know karate to going full fledged into MMA, like doing full time MMA training? Well, I was teaching karate there from thirteen to around fifteen. I was slowly transitioning into MMA when I hit fourteen, I believe. And from there, I was just trying to get more and more into it without. Um, conflicting too much with the uh, karate dojo and all that. And just to give people an idea, how old are you right now? I'm 18. I turned last December. That's awesome. I'm a December birthday as well. So we got that in common. Um, that, that's kind of neat. So like, is the plan like to do this as your career, like your, like your sister, or do you just, you know, just want to try this out and see where it goes? Like, do you have any other ambitions outside of fighting? This has been the main goal for a while outside of fighting. All I really do is build things. So, yeah, you're like a craftsman. We were talking about this off air, right? You build stuff. You made some knives. You were telling me like, it, it sounds pretty cool. You like being out in the wilderness, right? Yeah, no, I grew up mountains, always outside. So it's kind of like a piece of home. Anytime is, I- and, and like, you know, I'm sure you're, you're all done school and everything, right? Like, what's it like, you know, being in your, you know, your age group and you fight and I'm sure you don't have a lot of friends who do that, right? I'm sure there's a lot of kids who are into other stuff or you know, maybe, you know, doing different activities than what you're used to right now. Like you're in the gym on a Friday night. They're probably out, you know, having fun. Like what's that been like? It's pretty cool because a lot of people I know either do it or watch it. So they're, they're chill to talk to or like I'm finishing up my last year of of high school. Oh, that's right. Okay. We're on the wrestling team from last year. So we'd all have that little bit. That's cool. Are you are you actually in school or do you have to do like it on Zoom? Because I know with the pandemic, everyone's, you know, everything's different. Uh, we're doing a hybrid schedule. So it's like half the schools on two days a week, the other half the other two. But it's supposed to be going back here soon enough. Probably after spring break is what it's sounding like. So full time schedule. 
So I mentioned you got this fight coming up here on March 27th. It's the amateur debut. What, uh, like, how did you come to that decision to have your fight now? Was that something you talked with your coaches or how did you come to that decision that now is the right time to take this fight? <laughs> After I turned 18, I was just trying to get anything I could really. Okay. Because um, California hasn't opened up yet for the amateurs. So it was just our whole team and all the amateur fighters on it trying to find something so they can progress. Right. Okay. So yeah. So yeah, you're having to find fights out, out of state, right? Because you need it. You want to fight, but California's got everything on lockdown. So you're probably having to like, you know, look at other options, right? Like with this fight, it's not in California, correct? Yes, sir. It's at this point right now, it was either Utah or Florida. Right. Yeah. So it kind of slims things down a little bit. That's interesting. Uh, do, do you know much about your opponent here? Because, uh, you know, I know in the, especially on the amateur scene, like it's tough to find footage or find things like do you kind of just focus more on what you're good at in the fight as opposed to your opponent. This opponent I have now, I haven't been able to find any real footage on him training or like it's his amateur record says that he's or profile says he's a boxer and a wrestler, but I haven't been able to see those and judge them. So we're kind of just doing a all around um, game plan for it, which makes sense. Um, you come from a great training camp. Uh, I don't know if people know this, but you were a big part of Anthony Hernandez camp with that big uh, upset when he had over uh, Rodrigo in, in, in his last fight. Uh, what's that been like getting to work with these UFC level fighters and you're about to make your first, uh, you know, first fight. It's pretty trippy. Like, <laughs> and it progresses me a lot. Like I started working with fluffy pre heavy last fall okay. and from that point on my skill levels have been going up pretty quick because of it so i'm excited to actually compete now yeah because yeah. you've learned all this in the gym it's a matter of now executing it in the cage like how much confidence do you get that like you're gonna be making your amateur debut and you just you know you, you on a regular basis you get to work with a, like a ufc middleweight like that's you know it, it must be pretty like the confidence level must be so high getting to work with you know high level fighters like that yeah, I mean, there's always going to be nervous when I'm actually going out to compete, but I am I'm pretty confident that I can handle whatever's thrown at me from going with these guys and training with them. Now, has Fluffy been in much of this camp cuz I know he just fought, I'm sure he took some time off. Has he been in there with you? Like who's been helping you get ready for this fight in terms of training partners? Um, most of my team that's in there, I've been working with. Unfortunately, Fluffy was has been recovering from his hand injury. So he hasn't been able to get in there much, but this last week we've been working together. Okay. That's good. Uh, is Max Griffin in there? Like who else do you get to work with as far as bodies in the gym? Um, yeah, Max Griffin is in there. He was in there most of last week because he's fighting this Saturday. That's right. I know. Interesting timing here, right? And you got Marion fighting as well too, which is kind of neat. So oh, yeah, no, the whole team's going to go out and have a fun month. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Do you train with Aspen at all too, or is it just uh, you just train with the men? Um, I train the endurance and cardio classes with her, and she's part of the striking classes I do, but I don't have her as a partner. Didn't think so. Yeah, a bit of a weight difference there. Did you guys ever used to get into into fights when you were younger? You guys are so polite. I don't I don't see that happening. She was pretty intimidating growing up. <laughs> the truth comes <laughs> out. There you go. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. That's cool. What's it been like getting to watch her career, you know, just blossom? I mean, we're talking about one of the best women's fighters in the world. I think she's ranked number three. Like it must be cool as a brother to see your, your older sister, you know, have this much success in in your MMA career. Yeah. I grew up watching her. So there's never really a doubt in my mind that she isn't going to do well when she does it. It's kind of just there. And what's it like having uh, Jim as a coach? I know he's very, you know, organized. You got to be there on time. Like uh, he can be a bit of a pain in the butt sometimes, right? Am I right? You can tell me this because I do a podcast with him. So I have to give him a hard time. Um, he's not too bad. He's pretty, um, he does the jujitsu classes. So he's there on time, but he isn't like a drill sergeant. He does coaches very extremely well. For sure. That matters. Okay. Fair enough. Have you ever been late for, for practice? Um, yeah, but usually you have reasons there because I don't live too terribly far from the gym. Mm -hmm. So if I'm late, it's because of more like school or like I have a doctor's or something. Who's going to be making the trip down there with you in terms of your corner? Um, 
I believe most of my coaches are going down there. So Jim will be there. Who who else will be in uh, your corner as well? Um, it sounds like I'm going to have Jim, uh, my coach Jake for Muay Thai, and then Mike Guy for boxing. Okay. Is Aspen going to be making the trip as well, or is she staying back here, I guess, because she's you know obviously recovering? Aspen's going to be making the trip down there. Nice. Is that Do you like that? Or I know some people, they, you know, I, I have talked to some fighters, or they don't want any family there because they get nervous. Like, is, is that, I, I guess, for you, it probably motivates you to put on a good show, right? Yeah, no, I'm, family support, that's always good to have, and I always enjoy it. Is there a preference? I'm not going to ask you for your for prediction for this fight because, you know, I know it's the first fight, but do you have a preference of how you would like this fight to, to play out? Would it be a submission? Would it be a knockout? Would it be like an all-out war? What, do you, what would you prefer if you could go out there and, and get the job done? Unless it gives me the position, it won't be a submission. And from there, it kind of de- it just depends on how he reacts. It's like we don't really know that yet. So, Well, it's the Mike Tyson quote, right? Everyone has a plan until they get hit in the face, right? So you're going to kind of feel it out, I think, and then sort of see what's available, right? Yeah, have to see how he moves. And then from there, we play. So this is the first fight. What are some of your short-term goals? Like, do you want to fight, you know, three times this year? Do you have sort of an idea of what 2021 is going to look like for you? Um, The goal would be to get as much fights as physically possible. But with the whole COVID shutting the amateur rings down most places it's going to be difficult so i want to try and progress as fast as i can for sure and i imagine the goal is obviously like your sister you know getting the ufc would it would probably be pretty cool for the both of you to you know be fighting in the same organization right i'm sure that's on you know part of the milestone oh yeah that's that's definitely a goal in life to be there Awesome. All right. All the hard questions are out of the way here. Now let's talk about some cool stuff. So you talked about some handiwork. Uh, you make knives. You do some stuff. Like, was that something you learned on your own or you learned it in school? Like, where did you get an interest in that? Well, I, growing up homeschooled, I had a lot of free time. So I kind of just got on YouTube and I saw a video of someone making a knife. I'm like, I have these tools. Yeah. And I just started making them. What's the coolest thing you've made? Um, hmm. Before you answer that, I'll, I'll say making knives sounds cool on its own. So you got you, you already got the win there. But is there anything like you've, you've made recently or anything that comes to mind when I say that? Probably the first time like I took an axe and Viking if I had it. Okay. Of. What does that look like? Well, I had this busted up old one of the classical hatchets that was beaten and battered. So I took some angle grinders and turned it into the actual Viking type insignia axe. Okay. And took it out and one day took the whole family out axe throwing and ended up being dead eyed damn with it. So that was, it's pretty badass. Yeah. I'd say so. That's great. Um, and I, by the sounds of it, you do these, you know, Aspen's sort of known for doing these like really long hikes. You do them with her, right? Like you're kind of used to it. Yeah. I've been her hiking buddy in that since I can remember really. And that, I'm sure, has helped your cardio, I'm sure, in the gym, right? Because those are, lo- like, give an idea how long these hikes are. It's, what, like, a couple hours, like six, seven hours sometimes? How long are these hikes? Um, It depends on the terrain, because if it's flat ground, 12 miles could be, like, three, four hours. But then when we go up into the high Sierra, 12 miles is an entire day where we're climbing several thousand ele- in the feet in elevation. So it's just, like, a whole experience. And you like camping too, right? Is that is that like a thing, or do, I mean, you're kind of out in the wilderness, anyways. But do you like like camping and all the outdoor stuff? By the sounds of it, this previous year was the first time I actually started camping because when we were going up, we just hiked and we had our little house that was kind of like right on the edge of civilization. <laughs> right. So we didn't really do much of that growing up, and then last year we started, and there are plans to be some overnight trips soon. That's cool. Is there anywhere you want to hike or go camping that you haven't had the chance to yet? Any places that Aspen's mentioned that you're like, hey, I'd like to do that? Um, well, we've been talking about going and doing a couple day trip up in the Tahoe area. So they have those trails that go on for hundreds of miles. Do you have a favorite pet? Because I know the dogs always come with you. Like, is there a favorite dog that you like in the group? My dog, like my actual dog, his name's Kobe. He's the German Shepherd newest. He's... Um, Kylo is kind of pretty much older brother. Okay. He's cool. obviously my favorite. 
Good. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. I wasn't sure if you guys had specific animals for each other. I know Aspen has a, has a whole bunch of dogs there as well. Now I wanted to ask you this. Do you watch any TV or you play any video games? Probably not. Right. Cause you're mostly like outdoors and you're training and all that. Um, I, I haven't played video games in years full, like honestly, but I do watch TV and I love to read and I'll listen to stories on my phone with them. Okay. And what about like, um, you know, do you watch like what, what, what type of stuff you watch on TV? Are you watching like documentaries or news or what, what do you like watching? Um, I, when I watch, I usually go for things more towards like, um, Game of Thrones or stuff like that. If stuff I do watch that's, it. yeah, kind of like manly, right? Like, like you were mentioning the axe stuff. I was like, okay, yeah, probably Game of Thrones guy, right? Yeah. That's cool. Um, and, uh, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, re- relaxing and stuff. So you, you like reading any, any good books you've read uh, recently? Um, I haven't read any recently that struck out like on their own pretty good. But my favorites... The Court of Thorns and Roses series, which is kind of like a Game of Thrones-esque book. Okay. Before I go, I know I mentioned Aspen a lot in this interview, but obviously a lot of people know her, so I had to just mention that. But tell me one funny story with Aspen or some cool story that could have happened recently or something that comes to mind when I mention that, that that we might not know about Aspen or maybe something we don't know about Aspen that you know that you'd like to tell me here. Anything come to mind? (laughs) So I saved the toughest question for last. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what I can say without actually <laughs> without, without her getting into, without me getting a message or you getting a message about it. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Well, if she's ever offers to take someone new out hiking, it's always going to be I'm going to go kill this guy. <laughs> the truth is coming out. Yeah, that's what I've heard. They're like, yeah, we're just going to go for a quick hike, and then it ends up being like a long day trip, right? Oh yeah, she loves it when the UFC sends out their camera crews. Yes, they put them to work for sure. We go along with it. <laughs> yeah. No, that's crazy. Uh, Shayla, this was awesome, man. We went way over time, but I really think it's cool that you're going to be making your debut here. It's coming up here March 27th. It is MTF 23. Uh, Anyone you want to thank? Any sponsors? Any social media? Any teammates? Anything like that? I'll give you the last word, my man. Um, Just all my coaches and my MMA team. Like it's, They're all wonderful, and they've been helping me a lot.